Hello guys, this Science of Sport video is in relation to BTEC Sport and Exercise Sciences Unit 7 Biomechanics in Sport and Exercise Science. And in particular, we're investigating linear motion um, at this point, and this is the first video relating to that topic, and it's A1 linear motion. Now, the specification gives you a few things that we need to cover within this little video. Firstly, what is linear motion? And I'm just going to give you a brief overview of actually three types of motion. And then we break it down to looking at what vectors and scalar quantities are. And this sets us up for the, the following videos and the following topics within this area. So motion, linear motion, motion. Motion is where something changes its position in relation to time. So when we talk in biomechanics about a body changing its position, um, we might mean our human body, so we move, and we might mean uh, pieces of sports equipment, so um, an object moves, but it's often generally termed as a body, just don't be confused by that. So there's a change in position in relation to time or a change in space in relation to time. And again, here's just a few other words or bits of terminology you might come across, so don't be thrown by that. So something which is time related, we can describe as being temporal and a change in position or in space is positional. Now, studying motion, we're actually looking at a branch of biomechanics called kinematics. Kinematics are ways in which we describe motion. And again, the following videos will go into um, different types of kinematic description, looking at velocity and speed and acceleration. So kinematics explores changes in position, where an object moves from and to, how fast it moves, how far it moves, and in what direction. So all those um, aspects of motion that we might need to understand. And just to remind you that the other sort of one of the other branches of biomechanical study is kinetics. So kinematics is motion. So I, I sometimes remember it as with the M there, matics is motion. Kinetics are the forces that cause motion. And again, that's a different topic and a different section of our specification. So we're going to look broadly at kinematics. Now, three types of motion. The, here they are, uh, linear motion, angular motion, and something we call general motion. Um, this part of the specification is focusing purely on linear motion at the moment. Later, we'll look at angular motion. And actually, when we talk about motion, often it's um, general motion. And I'll explain what that is shortly. So let's look firstly at linear motion. Now, linear motion is, in simplest terms, straight line motion. Um, it's when all parts of a system or body or object move in the same direction at the same time and over the same distance. So true linear motion, really fulfilling that definition, aren't that common in sport. And I'll show you again some examples. So we tend to often talk, you know, when we're talking about, let's say, a sprinter going from the start line to the finish line, that's actually general motion. But we often can talk about that in terms of linear motion. So true linear motion isn't most common, um, but actually this might be a, an example of one of the cases where it is. Now, linear motion can actually be subdivided into two subcategories. Let's have a look at the first one. The first subcategory of linear motion is called rectilinear motion. Now, if you look at this, it's an ice skater, I guess, in terms of this diagram. They are moving, holding the same position, so their body, they as an object, are in exactly the same body position. They are moving at the same speed or velocity in the same direction, and every part of that body is moving over the same distance at the same time. This would be considered true linear motion. Similarly, if you look at this person on the right here who is jumping upwards, um, it's a gymnast jumping onto the bars, the asymmetric bars. Once they've done the jump action with their legs, i.e. they've flexed and extended their legs and they're in flight and they're holding that sort of tall extended position, their body in that upward extended position is moving in the same direction in a straight line heading up towards the bar. So during the flight phase there, they are 
uh, that is rectilinear motion. So rectilinear motion is motion along a straight line. In contrast to that, then, the other subcategory of uh, linear motion is what we call curvy linear motion, and it's sort of the, the clue is in the name. It's when an object or a body's motion moves along a curved line. So they are, again, in the same position. So this would be perhaps a long jumper or a triple, well, yeah, probably a long jumper. Their body parts are in the same, holding the same position during the flight path, but the flight path is curved. So it's not a straight line, it's curved, and we would describe this as curvy linear motion. Other examples can be things like the skeleton. So, um, you know, this athlete is basically going down the ice pathway, the tube that it follows, and there'll be bits of um, rectilinear motion, absolute straight line going down, or there'll be curvy, curvy linear motion when they take the bends. A ski jumper actually also going down the ramp um, in that sort of held position would be a good example of rectilinear motion, but that's not that common in sport. So our second type of motion is angular motion or rotary motion or rotation. And basically this involves um, part of a body or a whole body or a object rotating around an imaginary or a real axis. And while that rotation is happening, the parts of that object are moving at the same angle, at the same direction, at the same time. So it's a similar sort of phrasing to the linear motion except for its rotating motion. So let's have a look at this first example, the gymnast over here on the bar. So their whole body, whilst they're rotating, forget the release over here, but whilst they're rotating and they're spinning around the bar, the bar is actually acting as the axis with which the body in its position is held and rotates and those body parts go around in the same direction at the same angle at the same time. That's angular motion. There's a rugby ball here, it's, let me make it a little bit bigger, rugby ball here. Um, it is rotating around an imaginary axis. So if I put a skewer through the length of the ball there, the ball is actually spinning and rotating around that imaginary axis. That is angular motion. We might have a tennis ball, a football, in this case it's a rugby ball. The cyclist here, um, the, if you purely look at the limbs, uh, their knees and their hip are involved in angular motion. So forget the torso at the moment, that's different, I'll mention that again in a moment. But their knees and their hips, which are straightening and extending, um, are performing angular motion because if I put a skewer through their hip sideways or through their knee sideways there would be movement of the limbs or the parts of the limbs around about that axis that imaginary axis so circular path motion rotation is angular motion now finally the third type of motion which is actually very common in a lot of our sports actions is what we would call general motion. This is a combination of linear and angular motion, so straight line motion and rotation at axes. So if we look at an athlete that's running, we look at their torso. Their torso goes down the track and doesn't really change position, it's more straight line motion. So collectively, this athlete is going down the track, straight line motion, linear motion. However, parts of their body, their shoulders, their hips, their knees, their ankles, are performing angular motion. So we've got linear motion, the torso, and angular motion, the limbs and the joints. That overall constitutes general motion. Same with the cyclist as a whole. So we've got their limb, their legs, uh, angular motion, and their torso and upper body, and the frame of the bike, linear motion. The wheels, actually, and the pedals, angular motion. So collectively, you could describe this as general motion. Truthfully, a lot of the time in reality, we would look at a sprinter running the, down the track and we would call it linear motion. And actually, you will probably do that in some of the following parts of the work but just so you know that an athlete as a this, we constitute this as the whole body this is a mixture of some parts p moving more pure linearly rectilinearly and some parts performing angular motion 
OK, so that's part of this topic. The next part of this topic, A1, um, needs to look at a slightly different uh, component. So I'm going to move on to mass and weight. Now, first of all, mass. Mass is basically what we're made of, what an object, whether it's you as a human or a piece of equipment, it's what it's made of, it's its substance, it's how much matter is made up of, it, you know, makes that object or that body. Now, mass is essentially constant. We don't tend to change our body mass throughout a sporting performance. Maybe you could argue you might lose a little bit of mass um, if we, we measured um, but but generally it's a constant thing. Your footballs, your netballs, your shot puts don't change mass. They are constant and mass is measured in kilograms. However, weight is a little bit different. So mass is how much the size of, you know, of what this object is, whereas weight involves gravity. So when we stand on bathroom scales to measure our weight, we measure our mass being acted upon by the downward vertical force of gravity. And gravity is always measured at 9.81 um, newtons per second. We often round that up to 10. Weight should, we, we talk about weight and we, we go onto our bathroom scales and we say, oh, I weigh so many kg. Well, actually, weight should be technically measured in newtons. So if we weighed ourselves, this person is... 50, has 56 kilograms mass, but we weighed ourselves, we should actually read on the scales that we weigh 560 newtons. That's that mass times by, rounded up 10, gravitational force acting upon us. If we weigh ourselves on the moon, we would weigh less newtons because the, the moon actually has a, you know, low gravitational force. It's a sixth of what it is on Earth. Therefore, it makes sense that a sixth of 560 is 90. So we only weigh 90 newtons on the moon because of this reduction in gravitational pull, gravitational force. So mass is just how much are we? And weight is how much are we being acted on in a downward direction? Slightly different. And that le so let's just summarize the difference between mass and weight, first of all. So mass is the quantity, how much the quantity of matter a body possesses, remembering that it's possibly talking about us as a human body or possibly talking about any other object, a piece of equipment. And mass depends on the density and volume that the object possesses. And mass is measured in kilograms. Now, because mass is just measuring the quantity, how much the size, the magnitude, it doesn't relate its description to direction at all. It's what we would call a scalar. And we'll talk about that in a moment. So mass is a scalar. It's just how much the size, the quantity. Remember, mass typically is a constant value. It doesn't tend to change. So the shot put has a mass of 6.2, which is greater than a table tennis ball, which has a mass of 0 0.0027 kilograms, which is also greater than a football of 0.43 based on the mass of a shot put being more dense, um, more dense in this instance, actually the volume is bigger. You could have two objects the same size, physical size, but one object is a greater mass than the other because of its density. So it's not just about the size or the volume, it's very much about density, how packed it is with matter. Weight, on the other hand, um, is the force exerted on the mass of a body by gravitational pull. So it's a downward pull, so it's got a direction downwards towards the centre of the Earth, acting on the centre of mass. Weight is a force and is measured in newtons, and it's always acting downwards. And because it's got that downwards direction and the magnitude of mass, we would describe weight as a vector. It's got these two, two uh, components, whereas Mass just has one component, magnitude, it's a scalar. The acceleration of Earth's gravitational pull is constant at 9.81 um, meters per second squared, and therefore one kg um, has a force of 9.81 newtons, and that's how we get the value. So we times our mass by 9.81 being technically correct, or we can sometimes, we often round that up to 10. 
So you can calculate weight in using this equation. Weight is mass times the acceleration of gravity, the force of gravity acting downwards. So if your mass is 60 kilograms, times that by the acceleration of gravity at 9.81, that gives you a weight of 588.6 newtons. Okay, so we've got scalar mass and vector weight, which just makes brings me on to the last little a uh, few bits of terminology to clarify. Vectors and scalars, and you just need to understand the difference between them because a lot of the things that you will talk about in this um, first few sections, you need to recognize whether they're scalars and vectors or vectors. So a scalar has just a magnitude. How big, how far, how fast. We've talked about mass already being a scalar, the description of how much matter there is, the, the, the density of the matter, the size of the matter. So magnitude is very much a description of size. Scalars just have this one component. It's just the magnitude, how much. Vectors, on the other hand, have the magnitude as well as some kind of directional reference, or it should do. Often I don't think we do describe it with direction, but um, vectors have this direction as well. So the size and the direction. And the direction might be a description of up or down motion, positive or negative direction. So if we're going to the right, that could be positive direction. If we're going to the left, that could be the negative direction. You could use east, west, north, south. Something that is a description of where the, this force or this movement or this motion is occurring. So weight, it was our example of a vector. Weight has the size, the mass component, but also has the downward gravitational direction. So we, we would describe weight as a vector. So these are the other scalars and vectors that you certainly would need to appreciate for the topics that we'll cover in this part of the biomechanics unit. These are scalars, distance, speed, mass, inertia. They just describe, these are terms that describe the size of something, the magnitude of something, how far, how fast, how much, how much resistance there is to change in motion. These are all vectors. So change, change in position in a certain direction, how fast in a certain direction, you know, the mass in a certain direction, change in or how much motion there is in a certain direction, the change in velocity, the rate of change in velocity in directions, getting faster, getting slower. These are all vectors and you would need to be aware of those. So I just want to leave you with this as a sort of a very brief sense of what those technical terms are. We'll obviously look at these in much more detail in the following videos, but just pause and have a little uh, read through those. I'm sure many of them you'll, you'll recognise from work at school. OK, there we are.